Hello everyone and welcome to the series where we're going to be discussing how to become a software engineer uh, through World of Warcraft and League of Legends. Uh, and what I mean by that is that um, <clears throat> every principle of uh, software engineering that we're going to learn is going to be uh, through these games. Uh, we may uh, dive into Final Fantasy as well, depending on how the course goes. So you will be seeing a lot of gameplay um, as we go through the course. Uh, the reason uh, for these video series uh, and the goal of them is to teach all the required skills to get a job as a software engineer in the industry. <clears throat> and the goal is to do all of that through games rather than uh, theory and, and math. And all the projects and examples and materials are going to be from uh, either World of Warcraft or League of Legends. And as I said before, uh, there could be some stuff from Final Fantasy as well. Uh, the reason I'm actually doing this course is uh, threefold. Uh, number one is that uh, software engineering is a pretty attractive field. It has you know a lot of jobs. It's pretty easy to find jobs um, as a software engineer, and um, it's just it's not viable to spend a ton of money to go to university. Um, so one of the points is to just make it accessible to everyone. And uh, the second reason is to give uh, streamers, uh, students, uh, hardworking people, you know, a lot of people who do manual labor, uh, an opportunity to change careers if they want to do so. Uh, and it's completely possible to do it. Uh, and that kind of leads into point number three, where there's a lot of elitism uh, when it comes to software engineering and computer science. Uh, and I would say a lot of it is false. It's not actually that hard to be a successful software engineer uh, and there, there's no need to have all that academic theory and math. Um, <clears throat> I do want to say some some uh, specializations of computer science does require a lot of math and is pretty complicated but you know 80% 70% of the jobs uh, are nothing like that at all so. So who will benefit from this series? Uh, I am targeting a pretty specific audience. So number one, you need to be a gamer. Uh, you need to understand World of Warcraft, League of Legends, uh, or any MMORPG or MOBA genre, because there's going to be a lot of gaming lingo and everything that we will be doing is through games. So if you don't have a good understanding of these games or gaming in general, I don't think this course will be uh, good for you. Um, again, as we stated before, anyone who, uh, I've, I've noticed this a lot with streamers as I've been watching them a lot, is that a lot of them have, uh, you know, a sphere of what will happen if, you know, their career ends or if their game falls off and they're forced to do a lot of things which they don't want to do and, I, you know, a lot of anxiety. Uh, I kind of created this course to address that so they have a backup plan. Um, and have a skill set so they can <clears throat> fall back to it and they can express their creativity more rather than um, act out of fear. And the third group of people are just um, high school students and college students who are compassionate about games and are studying, uh, you know, programming and whatnot just because they like games. Um, but they're bored out of their minds when they go to class because I was one of those people. I went into computer science because I liked games, but uh, in university and everything, it was just, it was nothing that I really wanted. It was just boring, uh, you know, problems and mazes, which I wasn't too interested in rather than, uh, games. So just to give you guys some background of, uh, of my experience, um, I have, I have five years of experience as a software engineer now. Um, I did go to university and I do have a master's degree in computer science um, and I've had uh, the roles of a developer, tech lead, and architect in both startup and at a large corporation as well. Um, so the last uh, introductory slide that I want to go through is how to actually get the most value out of this course. Uh, the first rule is just to enjoy yourself uh, and, and, you know, laugh and enjoy. That's always a requirement and it's the most important one. Uh, so just chill out, you know, take the courses and eventually you'll reach power status as um, I would like to call it. And I don't think it actually takes that long either. 
maybe in a year-ish uh, time, um, you'll be very comfortable actually coding and maybe you can even apply for jobs, to be honest. Um, second point is uh, try to take notes as we go. Uh, it's it's very critical that you understand the fundamentals of uh, programming and software engineering in general. So it's good to take notes as we go through the course. And the whole point that I'm actually doing this uh, through games and showing gameplay is that you can associate the concepts with your favorite games so that you don't have to memorize anything or none of it has to be painful. And the last point, which is very important, is to actually do the projects and exercises that I uh, mentioned throughout the course. Um, some of them are going to be simpler, like uh, you know, answering a specific question in the comments, for example. And some of them are going to actually be programming exercises. But the cool thing is um, all of them are going to be related to the games that we're uh, we're playing. So there's not going to be any exercise where it's uh, a theoretical one or an academic one. It's all going to be related to the games we're playing. So with that being said, let's uh, let's let's start exploring the first three concepts. Um, classes, variables, and conditional statements. Uh, and in order to do so, I'm going to hop into the game. I'm going to hop into World of Warcraft first. So here I am in uh, World of Warcraft, and this is the character creation screen. I had to come to a realm which I don't have any characters on to showcase this to you guys. Uh, so as you guys know, in World of Warcraft, um, every time uh, you create a new character, you come onto the screen here, uh, and you basically choose your you know your race uh, and and the class that you want to play and. Uh, you can choose any of the classes uh, in below, like a warrior, a hunter, a mage. Uh, and once you click on it, then you, you actually go into the game with that class. So this is an example of what a class is in, in software engineering or in computer science as well. It's the exact same thing. So you have a warrior um, and a warrior has certain um, attributes and abilities that it can do. And it's the same for, for everyone, right? So, for example, when, when you actually create a warrior, um, you know, you can you you, you can hold uh, double-handed weapons. Um, you have rage, right? Uh, you, you have some certain baseline abilities like charge and everything else. And you have certain talents that you can choose, and it's very specific to a warrior. Um, and that's basically what a class means in software engineering as well. It's exactly the same thing. So another interesting point about a class is that uh, when, when I actually go create a warrior, um, I can I can customize it the way I want and I can put a name for it. So let's see if my name is taken here. So I can choose a name, I can customize uh, the the you know the face, the, the way the, the character is. Uh, and then I can um, actually get into the game as well. Now, what happens is um, the game creates a copy of a warrior for me uh, with my name on it. And so if you actually go and create a warrior as well, um, you'll have a warrior with just a different name, different appearance, but it's basically still a warrior. So you can create different copies of the same class and just change uh, certain attributes like the name. So in the, in the first case, we understood that's a class. And when you make a copy of a class, like we're doing here, um, it's called uh, an instance of a class in, in software engineering terms. But the name, the naming doesn't really matter that much. All right, so as you can see on my screen, here's here I am now as a warrior. Um, again, as I told you, uh, I have some health, I have a rage, rage, and if you create a warrior, you have the exact same thing. So we have the same, we have two copies of the same class but our names are different, right? And we have the same, if we open our spell books, you'll see you have like slam, I have slam as well. Um, and that basically means um, we're the same class, but we're different copies of the same class. So that's really what classes are. It's nothing too complicated. Um, <clears throat> and you can remember them uh, by associating them with a class in, in World of Warcraft.
Now the second concept we want to talk about is variables. And again, you'll see how intuitive it is. So as if you recall in our previous conversation, we were saying that we're creating two different copies of the same class. However, my name is for example, dark executor, and your name is, is something else. Uh, you can you can do whatever name you want, Pepega or a newbie or whatever else. Um, so somewhere in the system, it's displaying this my name up here. So it's stored somewhere, right? Like somewhere it says um, I have a character and the name is uh, dark executor. Okay, so that's like one variable which is storing my name. There's one variable that has how much strength I have, which is twenty. Uh, there's some variables that has my stamina as 24, my armor as 32, my cr critical strike is 5%, and my block is 10%. So these are all variables uh, which are storing um, the different attributes that I have as a warrior. Now, if you open your character screen as well, um, you'll see that you have different things as well, right? Like your HP, right? Your HP is 168. That's stored somewhere, which is uh showing your hp your rage bar uh, is also something um and all these different details that you see all these different numbers on the screen are all are all variables that are associated to your class which is a warrior right so that's basically what a variables are it's nothing too complex um it's just all the different attributes that are um related to your class okay Item level is another one, right? And I don't want to name all of them, and I'll tell you why um, after uh, at the end of the uh, video. So that's basically what classes and variables are. Now to make uh, to give you guys another example uh, to make it sink in, I'll show you uh, the exact same thing in League of Legends. All right, so now we're going to look at League of Legends. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna create a practice game. Um, through the training tool and in the um you know choose your champion you're basically choosing the class you want to play right so for example i'm going to choose uh akali right so i'm choosing the champion akali um and when we actually go in the game uh what the game is going to do it's going to create a copy of akali for us right so for example when you play normal games um you know oftentimes it happens where you have the same champions as the enemy champion uh, as well. You can pick the same champions uh, unlike ranked. So you choose Akali and the enemy also chooses Akali. And so what happens is in the game, two copies of Akali are created, right? So you have one, the class Akali, or you can call it champion, class, whatever you want. And when you actually go into the game, um, two copies of a collie are created. And you guys already know what that means. When you choose a collie, you have certain abilities. Um, you have your Q, your W, E, your R, and all, all of that's going to be the same. Um, but uh, the name is going to be different, right? Yours is going to be, mine is going to be called Reporter, and yours is going to be called, for example, Moose, right? So you choose you choose your class. Once you go into, the, once you actually, the game starts, um, the game is going to create a copy of a collie for you guys. All right, so we just got loaded into the game. Again, you see a copy of a collie got created for me. So an instance of a collie. I'm just trying to use all the different terminologies so you guys just hear it. There's no need to memorize it. Um, you can write it down just so you're familiar with it, uh, but it's not that important. So as you can see, as a collie, again, like we said, you have a certain uh, passive and you have the three different skills that you have. So that's pretty much what it means that you have uh, a copy of the class. So now let's talk about variables. Again, we said a variable is basically the different attributes that you have as a collie, for example, right? So what do we have? We have an HP of 500. So that's one uh, you can think of it as one attribute or maybe two attributes, right? Your current HP and what your maximum HP is. Um, as a collie, you have energy and you have, again, maximum energy and your current energy. So if I use my Q, you can see my Q, you know, my current energy goes all the way down and then it starts refilling. Um, I have, you know, attack damage 67, uh, armor of 29, uh, MR of uh 37 so these are all different variables that are associated with a collie and my movement speed 
So you can see that the same two concepts of class and variables apply both in World of Warcraft and in League of Legends. And the reason I'm showing you this is to show you that the fundamentals of software engineering is the same thing and it's applied in almost everywhere. And you can see how it's applied at a MOBA genre and in uh, World of Warcraft, which is an MMORPG. Okay. So now let's talk about um, <clears throat> conditional statements, which is the, the last part of this, uh, this video. So what do I mean by a conditional statement? So let's look at the game, right? With Akali, if I, if I right click, um, or with any champion in League actually, if I right click on anywhere on the map, it will move, right? So the conditional is exactly the, what I just said in English. If I right click on the terrain, uh, Akali will move there. Right, you see how I'm using if. Uh, if I press Q, she's gonna throw shurikens in the direction of the mouse, right? Um, so these are all basically um, if statements or conditional statements, um, which are very important. As you can see, everything in the game actually depends on it, right? If I press D, uh, I know a lot of newbies don't put flash on D, but uh, if I press D, it'll flash in the direction of my mouse uh, for a certain distance, right? And all of this is just if statements, right? If I do this, do that. If I do this, do that. And that's basically what conditional statements are. And I can show you the same exact thing in World of Warcraft. So here we are again in World of Warcraft with our warrior here. And I want to show you the same exact so same exact thing. So if I press spacebar in World of Warcraft, my character should jump. Right? So here I press spacebar, my character jumps. If I press uh, W, my character will move forward. And if I press S, my character will walk backwards. Um, if I press, uh, you know, if I click on Blood Fury, my character will use that ability. Right? So you can see, like, the game is full of different conditional statements. And you actually use it all the time when you're playing games. You actually mention it, right? Like, if you press 1 and then do this, then... The game will do that and that's basically what it is this is it's nothing too complex right so for example if i let's do some more you know a bit more complex one if i right click on an enemy um my, my character goes into combat right like it goes into combat stance and if i go near an enemy and right click it'll hit him okay so it's like it's full of different if statements that you can do uh, in the games and you can see again the same concept applies in league of legends it also applies to world of warcraft it also applies any anywhere else that you actually see any kind of software you can also do uh more complex if statements right uh, and i'll show you guys in another example with a mage all right so let's look at an example of uh chaining multiple if if conditions or if statements uh however one however way you want to call it together to do some more complex things so with a mage uh with a fire mage specifically uh there is a condition where you can press fire blast so you have pyroblast right when when you press three again if you press three it's going to cast pyroblast which takes uh let's see 4.2 seconds right so it takes 4.2 seconds uh, to to cast the pyroblast okay uh, i'm going to cancel this proc so uh, you know if you press three uh normally it'll it'll take 4.2 seconds to cast the pyroblast however if you press uh if you cast fire blast if you hit fire blast and you and you immediately after uh you know, in the, in the five seconds after you press it again. So if you do it two times in a row, then when you actually press three, it's going to be instant, right? So you see how they've combined that. So if you press three, normally it'll just cast fire blast. But if you press two, two, uh, sorry, not two, if you press uh, fire blast twice in a row, then your, uh, your pyro blast becomes instant cast. And you guys are, doing this all the time right whenever you're talking about rotation um like you know the fire mage rotation or any other class you're always saying okay do this um you know hit this first and then do this and then if you do this you'll you know you're going to do the maximum dps that you can 
uh, you can do as your class. So this is how you actually combine a bunch of if statements together. And that's also a crucial part of, um, of software engineering, mixing all these different conditions um, to create, you know, cool things. And this gives you a appreciation of, of the, of the code that's written for, for these classes, because, you know, it, it can be complex, right? Mixing all these different, uh, conditions together, but it's also cool because you can think of all the different ways you can mix things up to create cool effects. I also want to show you guys one example in Final Fantasy as well, because it's much, it's very apparent uh, there. All right, so for the last example, here we are in Final Fantasy. Uh, here's my character. Now in Final Fantasy, the, uh, one of the things that you can do, and I think in a lot of uh, Korean MMORPGs, it's the same. You can actually have combos, okay? So uh, when you actually do combos, your your skills do different things and they do more damage and the, the graphics look cooler as well. So in, in Final Fantasy, for example, I'm playing a Paladin. So if I press one first, if I do fast blade and then I do right blade. So if you can see in the description here, they're saying if you do if you do fast blade first and then do this, the damage goes from uh, uh, the potency of 100 to 300. So you basically do three times the damage um, if you do the combo, right? So if you do fast blade and then right blade, you do three times the damage. So if, if you look over here, if I press uh, Riot Blade by itself, so here's one condition. If I press two, if I press Riot Blade, I only did uh, 111 damage, right? But if I do Fast Blade first, so if I press Fast Blade first and then press Riot Blade, I just did 330 damage, okay? So you can see that they're mixing uh, the different uh, condition statements to create unique effects. So if I press one and then I press two, then it'll do three times the damage. And let me finish this guy off. And that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much uh, classes, variables, and uh, conditional statements for you. And we have covered it all uh, in in one video session. And uh, with that, I'm going to end this specific video with an exercise. So, what you want to do now is to um, identify. Uh, three instances of each of the things that we talked about uh, in the game of your choosing and preferably it would be in this, these three games uh, but you can also do Path of Exile uh, I want to make sure it's games that I'm familiar with uh, Witcher, um, <clears throat> Diablo, um, Warcraft or Starcraft is also good uh, so basically do the following uh, identify three classes um, and then write them out in the comment section. Uh, identify three variables that we didn't talk about in class uh, or in the video actually. And then also identify three if conditions uh, that you notice in the games that you're playing and then write them in the comment section. And I'll take a look and give you feedback uh, if it's incorrect or correct. Uh, bonus points if you can actually uh, find combinations or unique combinations which you think are multiple condition statements chained together, uh, that would be great. So with that being said, uh, thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, if you if you are enjoying it and if this video is bringing you value, uh, make sure to uh, subscribe so you can know when I post the next one. Thanks for watching.